Hi, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to get an Epson S1D13517 display controller to drive a display. Now to my knowledge this is the first on YouTube and probably the first on the internet. It's taken me six days to get a picture on this screen and I'll show you why. So for those of you who have been following me you know I'm into PIC microcontrollers this one's a 32-bit. I incorporated microchips external bus interface and added one mega RAM. This normally runs this board, which has got the Solomon Systec controller. This can control like a five, seven inch screen or bigger, but it's a bit slow and it hasn't got any fancy gimmicks. This Epson controller you can add two images. I haven't got that far yet, so don't get excited. You can add two images and blend one with the other. They call it alpha blending. You make the top image slightly transparent so you can see the background. That's called alpha blending. I designed this four layer board over a year ago. At the PIC microcontroller, which I've taken off is now here, just an ECM 200 megs. The Epson S1D controller there, 128 megabit SD RAM, which is 16 megabytes. So from 800 by 480 screen, you could get over 16 pictures in the memory. And this clever Epson controller has actually got 16 buffers. I'll run through some of the code briefly. I'll show you the area that fooled me and it cost me six whole days to get a picture on this display. This is a test pattern that just a simple code this Epson controller will display. I was happy when I first saw this. When I saw this pattern it meant I've got 128 pins of the Epson chip in the right place. So this is just an introduction to how to get it going. Let me reprogram this and show you the picture. There you are, picture of Paris. Now for a day or so, I could get this picture, but in the wrong colors. The reds were white and the dark background was blue. I tried over 101 permutations and could not get this color right. Found the fault today. Not sure if it's better with the light off. So this is Midas display, 24 bit color. I am only sending this Epson chip 565 16 bit color. The Epson controller converts it to 24 bit color. Hopefully you'll agree, that is a nice picture. Just before I show you the code on screen and some of the data sheet, this is what I struggled with for over five days. Today is the sixth day and I found the fault today. When writing 768,000 bytes, I could only get half a screen. If you're familiar with RGB, the first five bits are red, the middle six bits are green, the last five bits are blue. I'm writing five bits of red and I've got green. Let me show you why. So first and foremost, how do you wire it up? Put a copy of this PDF file in a link in the show more. So this is a look at some of the Epson chip wiring. All these connections here And across here, if you have a look, so the red 0, red 1, red 2, red 3, then all the way up to 7, so 8 bits of red, 8 bits of green, and then 8 bits of blue along here. There's four GPI opens you can turn on and off if you want. PWM here for backlight controller, tearing if you want that function. This HDC is important, like many display controllers. It needs to know, are you sending a command or data? Epson call it the HDC. So it's data or command. That pin's important. This is the write, the chip select, the read, HD0 here, and one, all the way up to 15. There are your 16 data lines from your microcontroller. If I rotate this picture, 
test zero and test one you wire to ground. CNF2, CNF1 and CNF0 you also wire to ground unless you want an 8-bit interface from your microcontroller. Then look at the data sheet, it tells you where to put these. But specifically, CNF0 would need to be high if you've got 8-bit data. All mine, all of these are tied to ground. This is the PLL, there's a special PLL circuit and it's got its separate supply. And all the other pins are to do with memory really. This data sheet tells you what memory to use and how to wire it up. As I say, I'll put a link of this in the show more and put it on GitHub. This is the data sheet for the S1D13517 display controller. Revision 1.6. So two types of bus, 8 or 16 bit. I'm using the Intel 80, which is the common one. You send an address, then you send the data. The memory cannot be read. That's the SD RAM. Two formats. 888 or 565 input. Display mode 24 bit. And it's, as I mentioned earlier, the chip converts the 16 bit 565 into 24 bits per pixel. Very nice. I've currently got this display, but once I get the display up and running properly, sort out my alpha blending, I will then go for the quarter HD. This one, or maybe just this one. This is important, 3.3 volts for many of the Bowers supply pins, but a few have 2.5. The PLL is 2.5, and one of the data sheets says use a second regulator, so I did. This is the test color bar you saw at the beginning. So on this data sheet, that's how I wired mine, all the CF pins to ground. I must make a note of this. So this data or command, it says wire to the host processor, A1. I'll show you a bit later on about this. This is the way you wire up the system for 16-bit data. There all the connections for the memory, the PLL voltage, normal voltage, the oscillator in, 20 meg oscillator I have, backlight control, I haven't got a backlight on this yet, vertical sync, horizontal sync, enable, the dot clock is the pixel clock, and then eight, eight pins for red, eight pins for green, eight pins for blue. And power control via the general purpose registers four of them, but I don't need them. Have a look at the data sheet when you get a second. On my chip when I got it, I've waited 361 days. It was back ordered, and I received two just the other week. There's a small dot by pin one, and there's a large dot over here. That was confusing. So I mentioned this HDC earlier. Forgetting the 8-bit bus, but it says, look here, when 16-bit mode, this pin should be connected to HD1. That's your second data line of your data coming from your microcontroller. I don't think that's right. They show it going to your host processor. I put a resistor position on the PCB in case it did have to go to HD1. So this is a bit confusing. So don't wire it to HD1 wire it to your microcontroller. The hail latches the data for the non-Intel 80 bus. So just wire this to ground. So the HDC is normally referred to RS by most other manufacturers. So you low for command and high for data. The chip select here, the showing falls low, then you send your data. My chip select is low all the time. So you don't have to use the chip select, you can just tie it low. So this white bit in the middle is a picture of the screen. This is the horizontal non-display period, and this is the vertical non-display period. And this is where ordinarily you'd send data to the chip so it's ready to be displayed on the next refresh. This data sheet's got all the register information you need with the exception of one register that cost me five days. Right, here we are. Register 14, LCD panel type register. As I've previously mentioned, the chip will convert the incoming signal to 24 bits per pixel, RGB 888. So you can see up here, bit 76543 are not applicable, not used. Input image format bits, one and zero. 
So here's a table down here, one is zero, 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 oh this is mine here, the input format. 16 bits per pixel, 565, five. so 5 for red, 6 for green, 5 for blue. 1 and then B, so 1X. Look down here for bit 0. When this bit 0 is naught, the LCD interface is configured as 24 bit, 1 pixel clock. When this bit is 1, so when this bit 0 is 1, the LCD interface is configured as 18 bit, 1 pixel clock. So I know my Midas display is 24 bit, and there are 24 lines of color going to that connector. So I chose one zero here. For all your voltage controlled oscillator and PLL settings, they've got an example on page 129. Let's go there. So this will initialize this particular Epson chip with these settings, and it works. This is setting up your X and Y for the screen. So there's all your settings. Right, display initialization sequence. Initialize the SD RAM, set the display mode, set the image window, do a burst of data, enable the LCD, and show the image. Right, so here's the basic settings. Initialize the SD RAM. Change the display mode if you want to. Just carry on going, follow this example. Copy all these commands. This is the display again, saying we want the X and Y to start at the beginning. And that's it, it should work. Except look down here, write image data, reg 66 in 67. Hello, what's this? Whilst I'm looking for the correct timing diagram to show you that 66 and 67, here's an example of the alpha blending. There's a little chick, there's an egg, blender two, you see the chicken and the egg. That's alpha blending. This Epson chip does it. The Solomon Systec, or at least the ones I have, don't. They're not this clever. Here's the 16-bit 565 input timing. So chip select low, mine's always low. HD command, is it data or command? You can see it's high for data. So it clocks the data on every positive going clock pulse of your right. And you can see here, red, four, three, two, one, zero, that's five bits, six bits of green, and five bits of blue. There's no reference here to that 66 and 67 that I just mentioned. Here's the eight bit mode, 24 bits per pixel, clocking eight reds, eight greens, and eight blues. So that's three writes for one pixel. Right, here's the eight bit, 16 bit per pixel. So you've got red, green, and then blue. So two writes for 16-bit pixel. But again, there's no mention here of that register 66 and 67. If I turn to my C file, hopefully you'll understand a bit better. So here's my code to set the window of where I want the picture to start. 5A, then the data is 5B, the next command would be 5C, but the register auto increments, so I've commented this out. 5C, the data is 5D, next command's 5E, 5F, 60, 61, the data is 61, next command 62, the data for 62 is 63, then the next command be 64, but it's auto incrementing, so you don't have to put it in. 65, and that means the next bit of data is going to be 66. So I've got a note here, so you don't have to find it. The next register written to is 66, because it auto increments. 66 is the least significant byte of the data, and then 67 is the most significant byte of the data. I was putting a 66 and then one color, then 67 and another, but it's all very confusing with this 66 and 67. The data sheet does tell you when you've finished setting up your display, it's ready to accept the data. So you just saw green on the screen, yet these first five bits are red. Five for red, then six for green, then five for blue. 
yet this gave me a green. And with 768,000 bytes being written, I was only getting half a screen. And that's what took me six days. Now scroll back up. This register here, the input register. Input image format, page 61. Six days. So six days to see the mistake on the Epson datasheet. And I found that fault 1634 on the 17th of the 11th, 2022. That's today. I started programming this chip on the 11th of November at 18.30 in the evening. So I found the fault on the sixth day. Now go back to the data sheet. Hopefully you're following me. So 61, at least I've found the fault and you won't be in the same boat. My C file will work and I've taken out all the questions that the data sheets leave you with. If you've got 16 bit data, follow my example. If you haven't, then don't follow my example. Watch out for the bits I highlighted earlier. This 14H, input image format bits, bits one and zero. Here we are, bits one and zero. 16 bits per pixel, 565. Yet I'm only getting half a screen of green and it should be a full screen of red. Oh, hello. Input image format, bits one and zero. But look where they are in this register. They're not one and zero. The two and one and then a bit zero for this panel data down here whether you've got 24 bit or 18 bit I've got 24 bit so that's always been a zero this has been a one for five days the one should go here bit two so bit two should be a one and that should be a zero not one and zero two and one so back to my C file and I commented out the proper code I had been using this for five days you saw on the data sheet one zero the correct register setting is bit two one zero so one should go in position two so it's not that it's that I couldn't believe the quality of the picture once this one was in the right place if you do not find this misleading then you're a better man than I am. But it's only since I've now pointed this out, you're now going to look. So thank you, Epson. You just cost me five days. So that's it. One of the traps I fell into and it cost me over five days. I found no other helpful sites on the internet for this chip and example source code. I'm going to make this all available and I'll put it on GitHub all for nothing. If you want to donate a coffee for the five or six days it's taken me to suss out those glitches on the data sheet, the link is in the show more. As I say, I'll put a copy of the C file on GitHub, I'll put a copy of the user manual and the data sheet on GitHub and put a link in the show more. So I've done all the donkey work, that's how you get it going. I've yet to sort out the alpha blending, see how many days that takes me. I look forward to getting some of the fancy features of this Epson chip going. I had been thinking I could get my own memory, stick another memory chip on this microcontroller, stick another memory chip on and get the alpha blending myself. The bus for this SD RAM runs at 50 megs. This on my board, designed for the Epson controller, runs at 90 megs. I'll unplug this, plug it back in, see how quickly this picture comes up. Ready, steady. Go. If you want a quality display, look at the Midas displays. If you want a fast and fancy graphics controller, have a look at the Epson chips. Hopefully you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.